Hello, and welcome to Read Along with Heather. Today, we will be reading Sagwa the Chinese Siamese Cat by Amy Tan and illustrated by Gretchen Shields. I have a braille version of this book. When her five kittens were eight weeks old and ready for a new home, Ming Miao called her brood together one last time. Before you go out into the world, she said, you must know the true story of your ancestors. Four pairs of light brown kitten ears twitched and pointed towards their mother, eager to listen. But a fifth pair of ears was turned toward a lizard that was scampering under a nearby rock. The truth is, Ming Miao began, there are not Chi Siamese cats, but Chinese cats. As a matter of fact, one of our family's ancestors from a thousand cat lives ago was the famous feline Sagwa of China. She's the reason your face's ears, paws, and tails will turn darker and darker. She's the reason I taught you to say politely in Chinese, meow, meow meow instead of meow the way cranky the cranky way Siamese cats do when they cry for food four kittens licked themselves proudly but one kitten guess which one was now busy swatting under a muddy rock with her high brown paw searching for the lizard with her light brown paw and so she was not really paying attention as Ming Miao told her kittens the story of their great ancestor, Sagwa of China. Sagwa was one of three pearl white kittens born to Mama Meow and Baba Meow, two fine cats who lived in a place everyone called the house of the foolish magistrate. The foolish magistrate was in charge of issuing rules and pro proclamations for the people and animals of his province. There's the cat family. If he had been a wise magistrate, he would have thought of rules to make others happy and healthy. A wise magistrate would have ordered people to take to care for cats who are sick or without homes. A very wise magistrate would have proclaimed that all cats should eat catfish every day. But he was not wise. He made up rules that helped only himself because he wanted to command respect. He, want, he ordered people and animals to bow down to him because he was afraid people laughed at him behind his back. He made up a rule that people could no longer laugh because he wanted more money. He charged people fines for breaking his rules. There he is. He doesn't look very nice, huh? And since the magistrate had made so many rules, people had to make him had to pay him many fines, which is why he had a lot of money, which is why his house grew to have many lavish rooms and courtyards, which is why there were many places that little kittens could explore where they could get themselves into many kinds of trouble. The kittens were as round as fat as melons. In fact, they were named Dongwa, which means winter melon. Shagwa, which means watermelon, and Sagwa, which means melon head. Actually, melon head was another way of saying silly, which is what Sagwa was known to be. She scampered into vases and knocked out them down. She clawed her way up the banners and pulled them down. She walked on the rims of the giant fish bowls. See? And she was the one who fell down, plop, right into the water. In other words, Sagwa was the kind of cat who always found her way into trouble. Not on purpose, of course. Other than that, she was just like all the cats in the Meow family. The cats were born with creamy white fur all over the same color as fine scroll paper. Over the years, however, the tails of Mama Meow and Baba Meow had turned the colors of of lump black, lump black, lamp black ink. 
That was because of the hard work that the foolish magistrate had them do. You see, he had discovered that the pointy-tipped tails of cats made very fine writing brushes. That's what the magistrate used for writing his silly rules. The tails of Mama Meow and Baba Meow. He dipped them into a pot of lamp, wick, lamp black Chinese ink, the kind of ink that doesn't wash off. Mama Meow and Baba Meow were very smart, as are all the cats in our fam family. And soon they did not need the magistrate to guide their tails. They knew how to write the words all by themselves. Of course, the magistrate still told them what they should write. No dancing, no playing, and no celebrating. One day, the foolish magistrate called Mama Meow and Baba Meow to a study as usual. It was a large, cold room filled with bookshelves, poems, paintings, and carved window screens painted red and gold. There, the magistrate sat in his big dragon chair, already tapping his fingers impatiently as the two cats arrived to do his dirty work. Now, if you're thinking there were only two cats in the room, think again. High up on the shelf was the kitten Sagwa, who thought a, who thought a dark spot between dusty books was the perfect place for a cat nap. But when Sagwa heard the magistrate shouting for her parents, she woke up in time to watch and hear everything from her secret perch. First, Mama Meow and Baba Meow had to jump onto the magistrate's desk. From a cubby hole, Baba Meow pulled out a roll of paper and tied up with a circle, tied up with a circle silk ribbon. Mama Meow pulled the ribbon up with her teeth to untie it, then sat on the end of the table paper to hold it while Baba Meow rolled the paper out with his paws. He had to be very careful not to rip the scroll with his sharp claws. Now the magistrate was ready to begin. Today's new rule, he shouted, and Baba Meow had to quickly dip his tail into the ink pot and poise himself ready to write down those dreaded words. From now on, cried the magistrate, people must not sing until the sun goes down. You see, the magistrate believed that if people sang while they worked, they enjoyed their work. And if they enjoyed their work well, of course, they must not be working hard enough. And now, he continued, here are the names of those who broke the rule today. And it was Mama Meow's turn to write down the names of those poor people who didn't know there was going, there was a rule against singing. If the magistrate examined the cat's work, grunted his approval, then left. The magistrate ex examined the cat's work, grunted his approval, and then left the roll scroll on the table to dry. When he was gone, Mama Meow's whisker twitched with fury. This roll is the worst. She hissed to Papa Meow. Look, he's even fined the cook just because she sang while feeding us tasty scraps for our breakfast. It's not fair. Yes, many things in life are not fair, said Papa Meow. But we're only cats. We're helpless. We have no power to change the world. And then the kitten saw what watched, watched her parents walk out of the room, swishing their tails back and forth with unhappiness. She wanted to jump over, jump down and follow them. She wanted to cry out to them, we're not helpless, we can change the world. But then she saw her, how high up she was and how helpless she was herself. Far down below was the magistrate's desk with the scroll of rules lying next to the ink pot. Finally, she realized, leap she must. There was no other choice. Guess where she landed? Pwah! right right in the ink pot Chinese ink flew all over her 
face and ears, coating them with brown black. For a moment, she could not see, and in her haste, she wiped her nose against the piece of paper below her paws. Guess what the piece of paper was? Oh yes, the scroll of rules. At first, Sagwa was quite afraid because of the mess she made. Then she act saw exactly what she had done. Her nose had accidentally blotted out the word not. So where, so where the rule had once said people must not sing until the sun goes down. Now it said people must sing until the sun goes down. They must sing. What a delightful rule. Salwa purred just to think about it. Thousands of people singing all that happy music. And then Salwa had another thought. She dipped her tail into the ink pot and sat down at the end of the sentence making a big fat exclamation point. Now they must really sing loud, happy songs. Soon enough, she saw what else she could do. She dipped all four paws into the ink pot, then danced over the names of people who were supposed to be fined for breaking the no singing rule. She danced and danced, turning all the names into black spots that looked like happy musical notes. Satisfied with her secret work, Sagwa jumped off the desk. She was heading out to the courtyard to lie in the rays of the morning sun when suddenly she looked to the side and saw a scary sight. It was a strange kitten. Its face and ears were black, as were its paws and tail. Sagwa bent her ears and hit back and hissed. And the strange kitten did the same thing at the same time. Puzzled, she sat up and cocked her head. The strange kitten did the same thing. She reached over to bat the kitten in a friendly way, and that's when Sagwa discovered she was looking at herself in a mirror. Now she was scared for another reason. If the magistrate saw her covered with ink, he would know that what she had done. He would have her mother and father hung up by their tails for raising such a naughty kitten. He would kick the kittens out of the house. She heard terrible stories of homeless kittens who had to chase flies for their supper. Her whole family was suffer, and she was to blame. Salva began to shiver with fright and shame. She hid behind the leg of the magistrate's dragon chair to await her family's doom. We will be thrown into the dogs, she meowed to herself. Suddenly, she heard a loud knock at the door. The official reader of rules had arrived. It was his job to take the scroll, read it aloud at, at the noon hour for all to hear, then post the new rule in the middle of the town square. Two minutes late, said the magistrate, and because he was eating, busy eating a bowl of noodles, he told the real reader of rules to go into the study and fetch the scroll himself. Sagwa watched the reader of rules wake up to the walk up to the desk. She saw his eyebrow draw together in a frown as he read the scroll. He then rolled up the scroll and marched quickly out of the room. Of course, Sagwa didn't know what the reader of rules hate didn't know that the reader of rules hated his job. He hated reading the rules that made everyone hate him as much as they hated the magistrate. And so when the reader of rules saw the new rule about singing, he was puzzled at first, then overjoyed. On his way to the town square, he began to sing. Just as the scroll instructed him. And when he reached the town square at noon, he was still singing. He sang out the new rule. 
From the crowd came a great roar of disbelief. It's true, sang the reader of rules. See right here? We must sing until the sun goes down. People pressed forward to read the scroll. Once, twice, thrice. It must be true. And then they, they too began to sing songs from their childhood. Songs about a good harvest. Songs of undying friendship. Songs of love. They took to the streets with dogs barking and donkeys braying. It ran, they ran all the way to the magistrate's house singing on top of their lungs. What's this? cried the magistrate. He looked up from his bowl of noodles. He could hear the people singing softly, singing softly at first from a distance, then louder and louder as the crowd drew near. The magistrate ran through the courtyard shouting, How dare they disobey my rule! Hearing this, Salva curled herself into a small, miserable ball. Soon enough, the magistrate was standing at his front gate, counting the number of people who he would have to find for singing. 1,032, 1,033. He stopped when he saw the reader of rules in the crowd. He beckoned him over. Why are these people singing? He asked the magistrate. Didn't you show them my new rule? But this is new, your new rule, sang back the leader, the reader of rules. My rule, said the magistrate. Let me see. The reader of rules ran back to the town square to fetch the scroll of rules. And when he brought it back, the magistrate saw the lamp black ink spots and noticed how they looked just like little paws. He was trying to decide how he should punish the cat but he could not hear himself think. Those awful happy songs the people were singing. And then, wonder of wonders, he heard the words to the songs. There were songs in praise of him, songs that thanked him for thinking of them. What a strange, what a strange feeling he had. In all of his many years as a magistrate, he had never heard a kind word said about him let alone songs honoring him for being kind. Before he could stop himself, his eyes grew wet. Because he had not cried in many, many years, his heart had become thirsty and cold. How wonderful to finally fill it with warm tears of joy. Just as the magistrate had ordered, the singing did not stop until the sun went down. When the people finally left, the magistrate walked back into his house, talking, taking with him his scroll of rules. He went to, into his study and sat in his dragon chair, underneath which a little cat was still hiding. Of course, Sagwa had not seen what had happened outside the front gate, so she was still shivering with fright, which is why she sneezed. Hush, hush, hush. Who's, who's this? said the magistrate. He looked under the dragon chair and drew out the scared kitten. He immediately saw the dark spots on Sagwa's fur. He held the sad little kitten close to his face. So you're the one who changed my rule, he said. And poor Sagwa squeaked, meow. For like all cats, she didn't know how to lie. She hoped the magistrate would punish only her and not her mother and father. But the next thing she heard was the magistrate calling, Mama Meow, Baba Meow, come here quickly. When they ran into the room, the magistrate held the curled kitten high up in the air and then pointed to the scroll of rules. Look what your kitten has done, he said, and Mama Meow and Baba Meow jumped onto the desk to see. Their ears flattened back in fear and they hung their heads. Because of what Sagwa has done, continued the magistrate, I want you to write it three new scrolls of rules.
Ma Meow and Baba Meow dipped their tails into the ink pot, ready to do their duty. For the first new rule, began the magistrate, I take back all the old rules. The people may now laugh and joke and dance and whistle from morning to night, from night to morning, whenever they desire. Mama Meow chirped with a surprise, Mama Meow, as Baba Meow wrote this down. As for the second new rule, said the magistrate, from now on, my house shall be open to all stray cats, and all cats shall eat catfish as much as they wish. Baba Meow purred as Mama Meow quickly wrote th these, this wise new rule. And as for the third new rule, said the magistrate, from now on, all Chinese cats shall have dark faces, ears, paws, and tails, in honor of the greatest of felines, Sagwa of China. Meow, 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 cried Sagwa, for she couldn't believe her in her dark ears. And in her joy, she tumbled out of the magistrate's eyes, arms and landed, well, guess where? Right in the pot of Chinese ink. And that's the story of our ancestors, said Ming Meow to her kittens. If you have kittens someday, you must tell them the story of the Meow family. You must always remember. Then she stopped, for there was still one kitten who wasn't listening. So Ming Meow went over and grabbed the kitten's tail with her teeth and dragged her away from the muddy rock. And when the wayward kitten faced her brothers and sisters, they could all see that her face and ears and paws were brown black with mud. You must always remember, Ming Meow continued, pointing her paw at the naughty kitten. This is why we look like Siamese cats, but are really Chinese cats. For better or worse, we can't help sticking our noses into trouble. Just like this kitten, just like our ancestor, Sagwa of China. And that's the end of Sagwa, the Chinese Siamese cat.